I'm Liv Kenya and my friends and I are traveling from Nairobi, Kenya all the way to Cape Town, South Africa. You're using the garden route, using this car. This is our story. Good afternoon from Vinduk and today I have a new driver. Oh, hi. <laughs> hi, Papa here. <laughs> so this is Papa. She's been hosting us when we've been in Vinduk. And Vinduk, if you you've been pronouncing it as Vinduk, just know it's the capital city of Namibia. The right pronunciation is V Vinduk. Vinduk. Others say Vinduk, others Vinduk, whichever way. Yeah, I can say Vinduk or Vinduk. Yes. So we are, she's taking us somewhere to try out some local cuisine. I love the food. As usual, I love the food from the south. The southern countries have the best food, especially their meats. Mm, mm. Mm. I love meat. <laughs> so uh, she's taking us somewhere so that we can be able to have the traditional food. This is our last day in Vinduk. So we'll be heading towards the border. We won't get to the border. Probably we'll get to it's called Bundu. Rundu. Rundu. We'll be going to Rundu. Ooh, it's somewhere close to the border, but it's not at the border. Actually, it's at the border. Rundu is at the border, right? I know. Like from from Rundu to the border, it's 500 kilometers to Katima. No, so you are going to to Katima. You just say that, and I remember that I, will, I I wrote somewhere that I'll be exiting using Rundu. <laughs> I lied. No. is a correction thank god that has been corrected in good time so but we'll be going to rundu yes. today and chances are we are going to do some camping there uh, because we haven't gotten any accommodation yet but you never know we might actually get an accommodation so while we are just telling her goodbye today thank god it's a weekend so she is available <laughs> if only we could have stayed longer but you know guys we were just passing by this city uh, we were just passing by, we'll come back and explore Namibia as a whole later. Right now we were just passing by to see the few places along the main road or off the main road that can be accessed by our small car, you know our small car. So, and as usual, you know the southern countries, people have to drive German machine. Today I'm in one. <laughs> I have to rub it in. <laughs> just know it's a VW. <laughs> the details... <laughs> The details are not important, just know it's a VW. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> do you know people in the southern southern countries, South Africa, um, Botswana, even 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 Zambia somehow, and, and Namibia, people drive very big cars. Yes. Okay. But in Namibia, Namibia is where I've seen at least people drive drive the German machine, the European machines. Uh, they, uh, they will get some Jap Japanese cars here and there as well. So at least you guys have a healthy mix in South Africa. Uh -huh. ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm excited. It's so hot. Yeah, uh -huh. it's 42. Oh, yes. Ooh. Yeah, it's actually 42 degrees Celsius. So it's so hot. And I'm in black. <gasps> it's so hot out here. And I'm getting used to this heat. Even though my, if you see my back and my arm, they are burnt. <laughs> I'm not yet used to this to this uh, weather but they are welcome to namibia <laughs> in namibia you have to get burnt to know that you're in namibia yes it's very <laughs> hot here and i want to ask you one question uh -huh. do you guys uh make your own cars in kenya or you import all your cars we mostly import uh -huh. there are few assemblers here and there but we mostly import but that's something we don't like we import our Import all your cars. Yeah. Okay. You don't have we any don't have car plant. Yeah. We don't. Have. Even the, 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 the when I was telling you about the matatu culture in Kenya, mm -hmm. those are our public service vehicles, the buses. Mm -hmm. Do you know they come as parts and then they get assembled in Kenya? Even the body is made in Kenya. Wow. Yes. Ah. 
that is why we can be able to craft it into the matatus that you see. Oh. Yes. Yeah. A lot of trailers come in Kenya as parts, mm -hmm. mostly maybe the chassis, and then we fix in everything else. Yes. Ah, we don't do it. Yes, we have we have assemblers here and there, but we don't have as much assemblers as South Africa. South Africa has everything. Even BW is there. Oh yeah. Huh? They, they have all assemblers. No wonder they buy their cars. Yeah, the cars are actually affordable in SA. Like most of uh, some Namibians actually go to South SA yes, to, to get cars. To, ah, it makes a lot of sense. Yes, and you also get some from Botswana. Oh, I'm not even in Botswana. Well, some the, huh? In Botswana, people have big cars because they they manufacture their car locally. Uh -huh. I'm not sure now if it's most of them, all of them, or some. But I know we buy cars from Botswana, uh -huh. and they are like really affordable. Getting. About an elephant. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that, that oh no, no no that is cannot be an elephant. They are trying to make it look like an elephant, but no. The <laughs> elephants look better. So you get so you guys have seen an elephant in the city. In the, city, the, city. <laughs> the first elephant. The first elephants we've seen we've seen in Namibia. <laughs> Do you know Namibia was in was on my bucket list for a long time? Namibia. Yes. Oh, okay. As much as you feel like it's a dry country, it has a lot of things. It has one of the wonders of the world. Is it oh. one or two? Maybe if you research. Is it? This. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her. Hey. She's not a local tourist. Uh, no, no, no. You should tour your country. We've come yeah, this um, for this far. Yes. So you guys must go subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll start uh, creating content about Namibia. So yeah. if you want to know more about Namibia, find her. Yes. <laughs> what spice is that? Hmm? Akabana spice. Akabana spice. Yeah. It's like named after the variety. <laughs> so yeah. The meat is called Kabana, so that is Akabana spice. So it's chili water water. This is oil. This is oil. Yeah. Ah. And this is vinegar. Vinegar. Yeah. You know, back home, back, back home we call it kachumbari. In your language, ne? Yes, it's kachumbari. More spice. Can you guess the country where they are coming from? Ghana. No, Ghana, how? Oh, ah! It's not Ghana, from where? Actually, opposite. I'm almost there, ne? Yeah, opposite. Yeah, western. Botswana. No, man, this is Manuela country. What are they? So, how much is this? This is 15 but 15? Yeah, and this one also 15. Is this enough? Look at all this. So when you come here, you get some pieces from here, from every stall. If you don't like it, you go to the next stop. You can eat like that in all the stops. If you don't like it, you go. But you like this one. But this one is very nice. How much? One hundred dollars. One hundred dollars. This is Kapana, the one that you saw being prepared. And this is the pap. And this is the salsa. Katasi of Vapa. Thank you, Vapa. <laughs> so we bid, we bid goodbye to her. She's such a kind soul and very generous. You guys, most of our food in Namibia, we've not been paying for our food, most of it. It's either Vapa providing or the other Kenyans. Hmm? We are so blessed and may they, may everyone who took care of us be blessed and may, may their taps never go dry. Eh? Yes. Look at the ladies, they are just... You, thank Amen. you so much. We're thank really you, May you be blessed. Hmm? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's like their version of Nyamachoma, right? Yes. Yeah, may but now... Never run dry. 
Bye. Amen. Now it is it is like um the version of Nyamachoma but theirs is like mostly steak. So they say that they don't call theirs brine. It's, it's just more of a porridge. Yeah, it's quite light. No wonder they call it pap porridge here. In Namibia by there they call pap or ugali porridge. So this one is quite light. It makes sense for it to be called porridge. guys you'll realize that in, when you come to Namibia the petrol that is being sold is mostly 
95 metal free that one is often 95 b power whether it is in engine total shell all kinds of petrol station and it's been 23 23 namibian dollars and 30 cents they scrapped off the 93 with the usual petrol from their market because it used to spoil cars now that begs the question what have we been consuming in kenya <laughs> are japanese cars more resilient i don't know you guys can tell me petrol is cheaper here hello goodbye safe journey <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're a man of few words. He, he, he yeah. knows a little soil. Say hi to people in soil. Mambo. Mambo. <laughs> Mambo. <laughs> So guys, we are in Groot Fontaine. We did not make it to Rundu, but we booked a place. Oh my God. There's one thing about, two things unique about this, this place. The first one is the name. It's called Leather Lace and a Suitcase. So that tells you that this property belongs to a traveler. The second thing is all the art in, this, in these rooms. It's like a sort of lodge. Uh, there are two rooms so all the art in the rooms were created by the owner so the owner is an artist we got a chance to get into her house and it's mind-blowing you can literally tell you can literally see her thinking process i've never been to an artist house that was a privilege so this is how the rooms look so there is this room here yeah. it has two it's called twin, twin beds single beds. Let's look at how clean this is. This is so clean. I think there is some candy. She likes some rustic finishes. The wood is like rustic wood. You can see the iron that has been used here. It's still, it's like still rustic. It's not so polished. Look at this. The crafts, this soy sauce, it's just very beautiful. There are these two seats if you want to relax and all that with a mini fridge and then they provide kettle rasks finally i get to try these the namibian ones so and then some breakfast items here sugar tea coffee and all that that is just basically it look at the mat i'm in love with this kind of ideas so there are two rooms this one has two single beds let me take you to the other room here's the bathroom it's just a simple space, but a little bit of her. Little bit of her all over. It's actually a lady. Yes. So, come. Let's go to the other room. So this is the other room. I think it's called Nostalgia. So when you get into this one, you realize it's a bit different again. Look at this. They are totally different, but there's a lot of similarity in the creativity. So look at this. It looks like the mannequin that the designers use when they are trying to like fit in some clothes. Hmm? This is just very beautiful. And then now this one is a double bed for two people. It is usually called a sleeping bed. And then there is a table there. Just the usual stuff. It even has this extra space. Yeah. Now, everything in the kitchen is just the same as the other one. We have some cutlery here, breakfast items, kettle, the microwave. I've been opening the fridge hoping that there is something in the fridge. When we came here, we saw the, the art that was in these rooms until we were like, who makes your art? And then she was like, you guys have to see my house. And then she took us to their house and it's all art. She's, she has those beautiful roses and it's insanely artistic and she's very very organized you see the kind of people who have uh, ocd ocd is the perfectionist she's that kind of a person and it was just out of this world nothing just looks the same but now look at this before you throw away your shoes someone has turned it into art this art here her house is full of this kind of roses imagine when you just get into the veranda in the entire veranda, there are these kind of roses. They're all hanging towards the, like, just, they're hanging downwards. Very, very beautiful. And then this one is my, one of my favorite photos. 
Look at these beautiful ladies. <laughs> this room is for four fifty nine million dollars, and the other room with the two beds is six fifteen million dollars. But we talked to her and she's given us a discount. You know, okay, Africans, especially Kenyans, we always have to begin. So we've been given uh, the rooms at four fifty each. So that's a good discount. Yes. So when you come expect maybe the prices will be the will be the discounted one or not depending on how well you bargain your case eh? yes you should know that but it's a place i would recommend that you guys come if whenever you're in broad fountain ensure you pass by this place that's the brief tour of the two rooms so guys uh, we'll sleep in and let's meet in the morning Good morning from Good Fontaine. We are having our breakfast as we tell stories. Yeah, tell, tell stories here and there. In, in, in Swahili, they say sto, stories are kakasungura, namweha. <laughs> that means tales, those ancient, ancient tales. So today we are going to pass Rundu. We were supposed to sleep yesterday at Rundu, but it got too late. So we'll pass Rundu and go all the way to the border. If we will manage to cross over to the other side, it's fine. If we will not be able, we'll still sleep just at the border and then we cross in the morning. Over 700 kilometers to cover today. So this is us giving ourselves a lot of sight. And if you're joining me for the first time, we've been traveling from Nairobi. We went all the way to Cape Town by road. We have our car outside there. It's called Pal. It's a... Kenyan car a Subaru and it's just a regular sedan and it's a very strong car we've come this far so we went all the way to South Africa we went to use the garden route and we got to Cape Town and right now we're in Namibia we've seen so many nice things in Namibia most beautiful things that we wanted to see are off-road and our car cannot go there we decided to just pass by and go wherever we can access but next year we'll hopefully we'll be able to return and explore it more. The northern side of Namibia is a bit cool. It's a bit cool. It's not as hot and dry as the southern part. So we're just enjoying this trip. So let's go for the adventure. And we are carrying you guys with us. So let's go. called Groot Fontaine. Okay. It's it's I, I just thought it would be a small center but it's a town, right? Yeah, it's, it's a small town. I thought it would be smaller than this. Look at the red jacaranda. You said these were jacarandas, right? Jacaranda propaganda. This town it, it looks so deserted. I think it's because it's a, on a Sunday but it's known for this red for these uh, red flowers, these trees with the red flowers. Uh, I think it's jacaranda. I know the purple jacaranda, but I'm told that this one is also jacaranda. And it's uh, Groot Fontaine. Fontaine means fountain. Yes. Groot, great. Great. So it's great fountain. Ah. The Potter's House Christian Fellowship Church. Oh, maybe even there are people. Yeah, it looks like there is a service going on. Filling up our tank again. We are at engine. Uh, right here, before we begin our journey. We have a long journey. Uh, we'll be covering... This is my map. We have 8 hours, 10 minutes. But of course, there will be breaks along the road, so it might be longer. We expect to get to the border by 5.52.
we've gotten to Rundu. This was where we were supposed to sleep yesterday, but we did not manage. And throughout the journey from Route Fontaine until we got to Rundu, it's much greener. The vegetation here is much greener. There are plenty of pastoralists. They live in communities. You'll see like uh, mud houses, grass-touched houses, so many of them together. And uh, from what we could gather from, he's called Valentino. Yes, the hitchhiker we had. If you've not seen where he was in part of this uh, part of this trip, please go and check. Uh, in my other videos, when we were in the southern uh, southernmost tip of South Africa, of Africa actually. So, uh, from what we could gather from him, is that these communities, it, you'll find that that is one extended family. So there is like, so many nuclear families. Uh, with each one of them with just one house, one house, one house, but they live together. They share the resources together, they cook together, they farm together, everything is done together. And the temperatures, it, even though it is very green, the temperatures are quite high. Do not be deceived by the sweater I'm wearing because it, um, in the car there is some air conditioning, but it's around 37 degrees Celsius. Yeah, so most of the places are just rural, rural, rural areas and they sell plenty of fruits on the road. I'm yet to confirm whether they are oranges or mangoes. There, there are a lot of livestock, especially, you've seen a couple of horses here and there and donkeys. I think they're used for transportation or something. But at least Rundu is the first town that appears to be like an actual town here. Yes. So they also do a lot of art, art, and, art and craft, a lot of crafts work on the road. We've got so a lot of wooden and wooden pots, wooden crafts, and even, drums. Uh, even others are, are the ones that, what do you call it? It's the drums. They the, are drums, they are the wooden drums, yeah. and then they are the ones that they usually bake on the oven. What, what do you call them? Pottery, yes. They do a lot of pottery as well. Yes, so, oh, and then one thing I've realized along this road is that there are a lot of spoiled cars on the road. They are like, basically, I think that there should be the type that are so spoiled, you just think they should be sold to the scrap metal. It's just there on the road. So, I don't know. It's either they don't know how to dispose it or there's no market. Or maybe they're hoping to repair it, but most of them are just in a very bad shape. Other than that, the roads were good. I cannot uh, complain. The roads were good. Yeah, and we've just um, had some interesting time looking at the villages around. People are coming from church, they were just walking lazily. Of course, the heat is too much. I even wonder how they walk lazily with that heat. But that is their life. So, let's welcome to Rundu. So, Rundu is in, it is in the, it's called Kavango East. If you look at the map of Namibia carefully, you'll realize that it is somewhere, it is somewhere close to, there is a very thin stretch that is bordering Angola. Botswana, I think, and Zambia. Yes, there's a very thin stretch just on the north, on your east. It is a very thin stretch, so it is somewhere there. In fact, if we've been told that this road right here, you see where there is the, the this road? Yeah, this road right here. Yeah, this road next to this signpost. That road will take you to Angola. If you do want to come to Namibia and still go to Angola, that road will just take you to, to Angola. So Kavango River is shared by, it, it, it comes from Angola, it flows through the border, uh, the border between, I think, Angola and Namibia, right? Mm -hmm. And then it pours into Botswana. If you've never heard of a Kavango River, it is the one that goes and forms a Kavango Delta. People in uh, Botswana, Actually, the Botswana government utilizes it for tourism. It is a it is a very good touristic area. If I will get time, I will go to Akavango because I've seen so many documentaries about it. Remember, Namibia is a very dry place. Uh, they use Akavango for water, but they have a limit. There is an international agreement that they have a limit that they can take from Akavango from Okavango uh, River. Because if they, they take too much into their reservoirs or, or, or they make dam out of it, the Okavango, Okavango Delta will die. So there is, there is all that story is somewhere in between there. So we are just stretch, we are going through the day. The very tiny, 
literally next we are just we'll just be driving next to the border between namibia and, and angola so i think there is some mixture of cultures in between there and yeah we'll see so we are here in shell we refilled our our tank and we want to get into the shop to see if we can get something to bite and then we continue with our journey yeah this is the road that will take you to angola but now we are taking this other road that will take us to zambia so we've already gotten our lunch this one is like 45 namibian dollars and Ade, what are you having macaroni, macaroni and beef mm -hmm. also 45 namibian dollars jen is having the same right yeah mm -hmm. She's having the same. Patrick is having some chicken. Okay, the food is delicious. <laughs> I had to say that. And it's it's very rare for you to get horrible food in the southern part of Africa. They're good cooks. They're good, good cooks. Uh, something interesting we've seen on the on the supermarket. They have a porridge. I think it's porridge, flavored porridge that is taken cold. <laughs> flavored maize drinks and they freeze it they chill it and then you just buy it as a packet they, in a packet like that looks like a yogurt so there is a small fruit market there I have just confirmed that they sell mangoes, what we saw were not oranges, they were mangoes and it looks like in every homestead there are a couple of mango trees Yeah, so they harvest them seasonally and sell Interpol, in, in, 
some fee for Interpol, so many of them. When we were at Tunduma, the, the agent who helped us clear the car and to clear the car at the border told us that there are some charges that once you pay, when you're, you're coming, as long as you tell them you're on transit, once you pay them once, when you'll be returning, you won't be paying some of them. So once we get to the border, I think we'll be able to confirm whether we'll pay everything afresh or there are some charges that we'll not pay. Remember, we paid almost 10,000 at the border, including the agent fee. We paid almost 10,000 Kenyan shillings. So that is something that you might want to bear in mind. Ah, this guy is putting at the goods. These people have so many goods. nobody looking after them you see like in east africa especially kenya tanzania and uganda motors motorbi motorbikes they are called border borders or others call them moto they are a common a very popular means of transportation you just pay maybe 50 kenyan shillings or 100 kenyan shillings and they take you from point a to point b very fast and very efficient in the southern countries, I have not seen that. In fact, the motorbikes you'll see, they are for the bikers, the very big motorbikes. They are maybe, maybe in a club, or you'll just see one or two bikers, but they are, you'll tell that, you'll tell that the, the, the motorbikes are the high-end motorbikes. I've not seen all that. Because the good thing about the motorbikes is that they can easily take you from point A to point B. At times, they are even cheaper than a taxi. But they cause a lot of commotion in the cities and they just at times they are quite innocent because most of them I don't think most of the riders I don't think they, they go to driving school. They just learn at home and I somehow get the license to, to to carry people and to carry luggage. So some of the reasons why these cities, the southern countries cities and towns are very organized. And I think the traffic also moves. There's not too much jam and all that. I think it's because of the lack of the border borders. It's impressive. <laughs> especially the people in Uganda should hear yeah, that. Especially when you compare to Kenya, Kitale, especially Al Kampala. Uh, <laughs> motorbikes. <laughs> Normally call it the headquarters of motorbikes. Uh, uh, uh. And not finding any in this area was really different. So the Namibian map looks like this. There's this finger. This finger. Now we are driving along this finger. Yes. And in fact, if you go to the farthest end, you'll get to a point just before the bridge we crossed in, in, in Botswana. Uh -huh. There is a point where you can see the four countries. There is a demarcation of the four countries. Lovely. Yes, you can see Namibia. You can see Botswana. You can see Zambia. We are here and we are about to cross the Okavango River. I can't wait to see it. It's the best soda you can ever taste. I like, I like the color. And the consistency. In all the countries, the taste is the same. These are orange peelings. It looks like this place produces a lot of oranges. And mangoes. We've seen a lot of trees coming. Mango, yeah. mango trees. Mango trees. Yeah. If you're a Kenyan, I would call this place Ukambania, Namibia. Yes, it's like the Ukambani side of Kenya. It has a lot of fruits. The 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 trees just look almost the same. It's a bit dry, but there is some green, greenness here and there. And it's the area that produces most food, right? It has to because it's the most green part. The greenest part of, the greenest Namibia. Part of Namibia. Yes. Imagine having two large deserts, Namib and Kalahari, and this place is hotter than Namib Desert. It is. Imagine. You know when we passed by Namib Desert. It was around 30 and then it reduced to up to 20, 20, 20 degrees. But here it is 37 and above. I've seen... In Namibia, I think the most popular cars are pickups. Yes. Double cabin, single cabin pickups. And they call it Bucky. Yes. Imagine we were just there. Just go next to that Bucky and then I'm like, what is that? 
<laughs> back if you hear Baki in Namibia and I think in South Africa. In South Africa as well. Like in South, South Africa, Africa, yes. If you hear Baki, just know it is a pickup. Now, because there are very few public transport, public service vehicles, like the vans, most of them they are taxis, you'll find that when someone, especially in Namibia, you'll see like, uh, when you could go to the mall, you'd see like people have parked their bakis, like I've said, their pickups, they're, they're parked their bakis and then, but when it stops, uh, the people who come out of the, of the baki, mm -hmm. there are so many, it's, they're like the pro box in Kenya. There are so many until you're like, where did these people come from? Because the baki itself cannot accommodate all those other people. I said that these were orange, no. orange peelings. They are not. It's this fruit. It looked like a wild fruit that used to grow in my grandma's place. And... This is so different. Mm -hmm. Look at this. The covering looks like it's for, it's like passion. Mm -hmm. Passion covering, orange co covering. I don't know, the peels. It looks different. I've never tasted it. I don't like the way it looks, but <laughs> pray for me. I know that look. I know that taste. Mm -hmm. mm, not bad. Not bad. You know the komole, the mm -mm. pirek or something? Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. It tastes like not very sour um, ginger. Mm. Not ginger, what do we call it? Tamar it, it's like tamarind, but the very less very less, uh, what do you call it? Because this is a seed, it's just like tamarind, but one with very little acid, but with some sugar. Let me try it again. I'm going to look at it. You want to try it? No. Mm -hmm. Try it out. If you try kamole, it's like that one. You call it what? In our home, oh. we call it a pepper or kam kamole in the colors. There's an, I know it's yeah. in it. Mm. For us, I'll, I'll we call it a pepper. I've never seen such a such a fruit. I've never even heard of those things. But it's usually smaller. Mm. This is a bigger, like a bigger version of it. So I didn't know it. Interesting. I, I no, not the actual tree. Like in Yanasema, I'm trying to remember its name, but test I know it. it. Test the same. You'll remember me. Uh, not bad, right? Not bad. It's actually nice. It's actually sweet. It looks disgusting, but it's sweet. <laughs> Mostly, it's, uh, I think just it's because it's brown. Don't call it disgusting. I think it's a wild fruit. What uh, Namibia? It's really nice. Fruit. By then, Namibia people, please tell us what 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 fruit is this? The 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 the, the peelings is quite hard. Yeah, quite tough. If you look at it from a distance, you'll think it's like an orange peeling. But when you touch it, it feels like a passion fruit peeling. Mm -hmm. But she, the inside is very different. I would like to try the the the, the fruit it produces. She even the did juice it with a hard stick so that it uh, it can open. Yeah. Oh, we bought oh, it from. Oh, that's why it keeps hitting there. Yeah. I thought she was making fireworks. No, the one she's we... making, she's making like small boats. Mm -hmm. But when you buy it, she'll hit it. So we got it from that that stall there across the road. It's on higher purchase. I need to go and pay for it. It's only two dollars. It's only two runs. Two runs of two dollars. Namibian dollars.
Kavango River, but it's I'm just after the Kavango River. There is this police stop. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Do we are in Sawai, small stop. Okay. Okay, safe journey. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. We are passing through Bogota National Park, eh? Buffalo Gate. So we should expect to see some buffaloes here. I'm assuming so. We've just gotten in. We've not paid even a single cent. Okay. Ooh. This is good. This is good. So let's look out for some animals, some wild animals. We've not seen many wild animals in Namibia. Maybe this is our chance to see. We are at Katima Mlilo, the border between Namibia and Zambia. We will be crossing through Zambia as we head towards our ninth country, Malawi. So guys, stay tuned for the coming episodes. If you are new to the channel, kindly consider subscribing and joining our virtual family. Please share the video with your friends and comment below on what you think of the journey so far. Until the next episode, guys. Bye.